Can we just stand on our feet for a minute and give him some love? Love on him, church. Tell him how much you love him. Jesus, God, we welcome you. Lord, we thank you for your presence, Lord, that's in this house. God, I feel your presence so strong in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, church, just press a little bit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we worship you in this house. God, I ask you to come into this place tonight, Lord. Lord, take me, your servant, and hide me behind the cross of Calvary. Lord, let your anointing fall in this house, God. Lord, the conviction power. Lord, as Brother Obi and different ones have already said, Lord, we don't want condemnation. Lord, I felt condemnation from religious church folk before. Lord, condemnation pushed me away. But Lord, it was your convicting power that drove me to an altar, to a place of repentance that, Lord, changed my life. Lord, that's what we want in this house tonight. We want your conviction to fall in this house that will draw us to a place of repentance. Penance, God, to a place that we hunger and thirst after you. Lord, I ask you to move in this house. Hallelujah. You can be seated. I appreciate the Lord. I appreciate his presence that I feel in this house. I appreciate Brother Anthony given me the opportunity to speak tonight. If you have your Bibles and would turn with me to the book of Job, the 14th chapter. Job 14, 13, verses 13 and 14. If I had a title tonight, it would be Fight On. You're at the breaking of dawn. Your change is coming. Fight on. You're at the breaking of dawn. Your change is coming. Brother Anthony preached this morning, and he preached all around my message. I thought, God, do you want me to preach that? Brother Anthony's practically done preached it already. Then Caleb gets up here tonight and he begins to talk about that woman with the issue of blood uh, and how she had a determination. Uh, or as Brother Anthony preached this morning, uh, she was persistent. Uh, she had a persistency uh, that she was determined. Uh, she persevered uh, through her pain uh, that until uh, the change came. Uh, can I tell you tonight, church, uh, fight on. Uh, you're at the breaking of dawn. Uh, yeah, it's the midnight hour, uh, but can I tell you we can may endure for the night, uh, but your joy uh, is just around the corner. Fight on. You're at the breaking of dawn. Your change is coming. Job 14 verses 13 and 14 says, Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be past, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. Brother Anthony preached here a while back about an appointed time. Verse 14 says, If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. God, I'm going to hold on. <coughs> Lord, it, it looks hopeless. God, everything around me, Lord, the facts are stacked against me. And they say that I'm not gonna that this thing's not gonna move, that it's not gonna turn around. The doctors have already diagnosed me and they've already took x-rays and they've showed me that I meet up with cancer and this thing ain't going to change. But can I tell you to hold on, to wait, to take hold of the master's hand. They're not the great physician. I know the great physician and his name is Jesus. Can I tell you to hold on, your change is about to come. I looked up in Strong's, the word change. And it gave several different definitions. In the Hebrew, the first word for change was khalifa, which means alternation or a change of course. I'm talking about a change. I'm going to wait till my change comes. An alternation or change of course. 
Can I tell you, some of you, uh, you've been on a road uh, and it seemed like it was dark and dreary uh, and you seemed like you couldn't see daylight. Uh, can I tell you, just hold on. Uh, just keep pressing a little bit. Uh, I see light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, I see a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, if you'll just press a little bit, uh, your change is coming. Uh, I'm talking about a change uh, that will alter the course that you've been on, uh, that God will turn this thing around. Uh, sure, the storm uh, has come uh, and the winds have blown and they've tossed you in a different direction. Can I tell you to hold on? God's about to turn this thing around and cause you to be headed in the right direction. Your change is coming, church, if you'll just press on. Isaiah 40 and 31 says "But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord, church. He's about to turn this thing around in your situation. Isaiah 42 and 9 says, Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare before they spring forth. I tell you of them. Isaiah 43 and 19 says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The second word in the Strong's for change is caliph. It means to hasten away, to pass on, to spring up, to pierce or change, to abolish, to alter, to change, to cut off, to go on forward, to grow up to be over, to pass away, or pass on, or pass through, to renew, to sprout, or strike through. Can I tell you, God's about to call some things to hasten away in your life, uh, some situations and some circumstances uh, that have held you captive. Uh, God's about to call some change to come. Uh, it looked like you wasn't going to get through. Uh, the enemy said, you've always fought this thing. Uh, you've always been tormented but minute by that thing. Uh, it'll always haunt you. Uh, can I tell you, God's about to abolish some things out of your past. Uh, he's about to call some things to pass away, uh, some things that have tormented you, uh, and you felt like you brought them to the altar time after time. I know even in my own life, uh, Brother Anthony, uh, I brought some things over and over to the altar, uh, and I heard the Lord to say to me at the first of this year, uh, he said, that thing that you fought, uh, you're no longer going to fight it anymore. Uh, I'm about to call some things to change. Uh, that thing that, uh, that has tormented you uh, and oppressed you, uh, I'm about to bring some change. To hasten away, to pass on, to spring up, to pierce or change, as to abolish or alter. I like this one. Go on forward. God's about to cause you to go on forward. It seemed like up to this point, you take, for every step you took forward, you take two steps back. But can I tell you, God's about to cause that thing to change. The things that always come up against you and seem to cause, seem to blow you backwards. Uh, God's about to cause you uh, to be uh, to to leap over those things, to leap over those storms and those trials in your life. I also like this one. Grow up. You don't want to hear this one. But I heard God say, I'm about to cause you to grow up. I'm about to cause you to grow up, to get over. The word means, it, it also says to be over. God's about to cause you to grow up. There's some things that you've held on to, and, and Brother Anthony's preached around here, and he used me as the illustration with Whitney's jacket, how we take things, and we and when past hurts and defeats, and we want to pet them, and we want to pamper them, and we want to baby them. Can I tell you, God's about to cause you to be over some things. It's time to get over it. Say, devil, I'm getting over it. I'm letting go of it. I'm not going to let that thing torment me. Yes, they hurt me, and yes, the words that they spoke over me, they cut deep and they hurt me. But I'm getting over it. I'm going on. I'm pressing forward. My change is coming. Hallelujah. Shut up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The 
pass away, to pass on, or to pass through. But I tell you what he does not deliver you from, he will keep you through. Lisa showed me a little thing this morning about a man that was carrying a cross. And he went to God and he said, Lord, he said, can't you do this? This cross is too heavy. It's too heavy. I can't carry it. Can't you just cut it down a little bit? He said, cut it a little bit shorter. And he went along a little bit further. And he come back to God and he said, Lord, can this, this cross is too heavy to bear. I can't bear it. Can't you cut it a little bit shorter? And he cut it a little bit shorter. And then when he reached the, dip, the area that he was going to, there was a big trench that he couldn't get over. And there was other people who would bear, who would bear their cross. They carried it, and they didn't plead for God to take it away. They just prayed for God to give them the grace to bear it, the strength. And when they came to the place that they needed it the most to be able to cross over what they were going through, his was too short. Can I tell you, we need to just cry out, God, keep me in this situation. God, give me the strength that I need to face it. Zechariah 3 and 4 says, And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. Isaiah 61 and 3 says, To unto a point unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Can I tell you, God's about to clothe you in a garment of change. You wore the spirit of heaviness. You've been weighed down and you've been burdened by the cares of this life. And situations out of your past have caused you to be clothed with heaviness. And it seemed like you couldn't break free from it. Can I tell you, God's about to give you a clothes change. He's about to cause your raiment, the garment you've been wearing, that spirit of heaviness. He's about to change it. He's about to give you the spirit of joy. He's about to give you a spirit of praise in this house. Can somebody take a minute and stand on your feet and give him some praise? Tell him, Lord, clothe me with your praise. Hallelujah, Lord, you're worthy. Lord, we magnify you in this house, Jesus. Hallelujah. The third word in the Strong's for change is makaliasta, which means a mantle as easily drawn off or a changeable suit of apparel or change of raiment. 1 Corinthians 15 and 51 says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. 2 Corinthians 3 and 18 says, But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Can I tell you, God's getting ready to change some situations in your life. I truly believe that this year is a year of change, Brother Anthony. I believe we're headed somewhere. I believe as a body of Christ. I believe as a community. I talked about Friday night. We took communion. And I talked about community and union and and how that community, community, you take the word commune plus unity equals community, how we come together. Somebody said it in this place tonight. I believe it was Brother Obi talked about how good it is that that brothers dwell together in what? Unity. I believe God is knitting this body of believers here together for the end time work of His kingdom. I believe Miracle Deliverance Tabernacle is headed somewhere. If we'll only stay humble, if we'll only humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God and not become prideful and exalted and lifted 
it up. But if we'll stay humble before him, I believe we're headed somewhere, church. I believe this is a year. And I believe Brother Anthony said that Paul Wynn said that he believed that this was going to be a year of harvest. I believe we're truly going to harvest that this year. We're going to take in the harvest. I believe there's souls that are out there who have been lost, who are lost and undone. And they're hurting and they're miserable and they're tormented by the cares of this life. And they're crying out for help. And I believe God's going to use this place to bring some deliverance to some people's lives. But if we lay down and quit now, we miss out. We got to fight on. We got to press on. The number seven means completion or perfection. The number eight means new beginnings. I'm talking about fighting on, church. No change is coming. Matthew 11 and 12 says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. The problem is, we got microwave religion. We done got so used to these little TV dinners that we can pop in the microwave, and they're done in a split second. We want to come in the house of God and we want to say, okay, God, I need it, but I need it now. We don't want to wait. We don't want to press. We don't want it to cause us anything. We don't want to have to suffer any. Can I tell you, in order to reign with him, you got to suffer with him. I'm getting ready to come to a close. Jacob. Brother Anthony spoke on this this morning, and I thought he's fixing to preach my message completely. Genesis 32, 22 through 31 says, And Jacob, and he arose that night and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed over the ford of Jabbok. He took them, sent them over the brook, and sent over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaks. Listen to what Jacob said. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob. Do you know what Jacob meant? Jacob meant deceiver. Can I tell you, maybe because of things out of your life, uh, people have hung you with many different names. Uh, they say that's a drug addict going right there. Uh, that ain't nothing but an old alcoholic. Uh, that person, uh, they, they're always sick. I don't care. Every time you look at her, uh, she's always uh, in the mully grub. She's always fighting depression. Uh, she's just always depressive. Uh, can I tell you, they may be labeled you with many things, uh, and they may have hung names on you. Uh, and sure, you may have. Uh, some of them may be true. Yeah, I might have been a drug addict. Yeah, I might have been an alcoholic. I might have been this or that. But can I tell you, when I met the man named Jesus, and I wrestled in the altar, and I cried out to him, he brought about a change. He changed me into his image and into his likeness. Hallelujah. Man will label you many different things. But can I tell you, if you'll just press on, sure, you may be in the wrestling season. Maybe you're, maybe you're a new convert. Maybe you're, you've just come to God, and maybe he's delivered you from drugs. And maybe you're still fighting and wrestling, and maybe that thing's tormenting you. Can I tell you to press on in this altar tonight? If you'll get in here, and you'll take hold of the horns of the altar, can I tell you, you won't have to have a 12-step program. You won't have to go to detox and go to rehab after rehab. 
have. Can I tell you, I got a friend of mine. Uh, their son uh, has been, I know, over 15 or 20 times uh, to detox center at the detox center. He spent time in prison, and it ain't worked, Brother Anthony. The 12-step programs may be good, and they may sound good, but they're not what works. The only thing that can set a man free, the only thing that can wash drugs out of your system is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You want to know why we want to send them to rehab? You want to know why we want a 12-step program? Because we got microwave religion. We want the easy way out. We won't want to get in the altar anymore with them. We don't want to wrestle until God, until we see God turn their life around. Can I, can, can I tell you, I remember as a young boy, it was some of the older saints that would get in the altar and they wouldn't let go, yeah, even if it took all night long. If I got up today and I left out of here and my change hadn't come, the next service, Brother Anthony, those same saints would gather around me again and they would cry out and pray and over and over and over. They had persistency. Persistency. Till they saw God move. That's what it's going to take, church. We got to hold on. We got to press our way through this thing. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. Israel means prince of God. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, saying, tell me your name, I pray. And he said, why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. So Jacob called the name of the place Penel, meaning the face of God. For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Just as he crossed over Penel, the sun rose on him, and he limped on his hip. That 23rd verse says, 22nd verse says, and he crossed over the ford of Jabbok. Anybody in the house know what Jabbok means? Come on. Come on, it means a pouring out, an emptying out. Can I tell you what took place there? Was Jabbok had to empty himself out. He had to be emptied out. He had to be poured out. Can I tell you, just hold on. Hold on, dear saint. You're just at a place of emptying out. God's just getting you ready. He's emptying some things out. He's cutting some things out of me. He's emptying some things out of me that aren't like him. And he's about to give me a name change. He's about to cause some things to change in my life. The enemy's always labeled me as one that walked in defeat. You'll always be defeated. You won't never walk in victory. You won't never get free from that thing. It'll always torment you. It'll always plague you. You'll always fight it. Can I tell you? I'm determined that I'm going to take hold of the horns of the altar. I'm going to do like Jacob did. I'm going to get a hold of God. And I'm going to tell him, Lord, I'm not letting you go. Lord, I'm going to hold on. Lord, it may not come today. It may not come tomorrow. It may not come two weeks from now. But God, I'm going to hold on until my change comes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jabbok place of pouring out or emptying out. Can I tell you, you're just at a spiritual place of Jabbok. You're just at a place of emptying out. That's all it is. You're just at a place of emptying out. The enemy wants you to think that God's turned his back on you and he's not going to move for you. What he don't realize is the very situation that you're in, God holds in the palm of his hand and you're right in the center of his wheel and God's taking the very thing that you're fighting and facing and he's working it for your good. Can you stand on your feet in this house? Hallelujah. And 
determined I'm going to hold on. I'm determined I'm going to make it. Church, that's what the world's looking for, Brother Anthony. They're looking for somebody that'll be persistent in their walk with God. They've seen religion, and they know religion don't work. They're looking for somebody who has got a hold uh, of a true relationship uh, with this man called Jesus Christ. Uh, Somebody that they can honestly say, I I know that man. I I know that woman. I I know where they come from. I've watched them, uh, how God changed their life. Uh, I've watched them down through the years, uh, how they've been the same Uh, yesterday. uh, They've not changed. Uh, They wouldn't toss to and fro with every wind of doctrine, uh, but they've been persistent. Uh, No, everything ain't always went good. No, they haven't always been on the mountain, but I watched Anthony win when he walked in the low places and he stayed the same. His faith in God didn't waver and he didn't move. Hallelujah, that's what the world's looking for. Can you just give him some praise in the house?